Mema obi biara akwaba deba ria for Ken TV. Minim se nyame adom ene onrabo Kennedy akompre kwa Japan nyan kupon. No kure nyan kupon a oni ye moda. Na ori ni ye mwansu de biara da. Na ore ya subo ya hombayi. Free ya tamfu nsemu abreni abreni na. Na ene ya tamfu bre. Na ya tamfu enim iguasi. Minim se obi biara hoye. Na menso Nyame adom, mumpa ebo, ni no kurinti, mehoye. Si se gana fuwe bre, gana fuwe su. NPP fuwe se omo nte re. Namu, me franka dane, ena omo e eh, huwe me, eku me efri eh, ati asifo asasi iso. Mwen huwe me abo frake tuwe yu. E eh, nye wanwa, e eh, wanwa. E ho politika party ya, yade gana ashe monsa, gana sika, gana japa diye. Ah, esese samri ya gana fu yesu. Mwoni yesu. Na mo gen gana fu. Muna mo di sikano so gana fu asene no. Se sikano. Mo de bo a wudi fu pa. Se wan fufia me franka dane. Abo frake tuwe yi. Na wun kume. Mo de gana sika. E eh, ma adin si fu ni akon fu. Se wan kanche. Na wun kume franka dane yi. En pipi fu. En eh, mwen ne. En eh, na mo economic mizaya no. Se se diye, waye e hiyan manchene, fonde la. Na, me kachire mo se, e nyame pena mede kasa, asema ame kembi ya anon, e ye rade. E rade ne eshe me, e nunti na NPP fuwa, mu nipa ni wiyasi tu mi ino, in tu mi mea. Abreni abreni na, mo plane, e wudie, evil against mi ino, ne nyanko pon e ye me kese, nyanko pon e eshe mi enwi nyam, ne nyanko pon e mame nindie. Na at the same time, na nyanko pang e gumo MPP fwo mweni mase. Ene, mwenu, mwkasa mafo efe si kase mwen. Mwenu se ene, wababe gumo mweni mase. Na adofo ni eti fwo, me me kasa with evidence and fact. Me bo full interview nwa no mwenti ye. Na me kachre MPP fwo se, this is not a prophecy. This is a reality. Nyaminti MPP, mwen kwa opposition 2024. Na ene, onwabu kwa ku kwa ten. A oye NPP ni mapa. Oye NPP NP. Obwasu West. Waye Deputy Minister of Finance. From 2017 to 2021. Ene ya mene mo kasei. Onwabu kwa ku kwa ten. Ena okasama NPP party. Efe si kasem hon. Ono na o defende abayin. Efe si kasem hon. Kwa nya abayin na faso. Atutu ni si kasem. Na osi, obehwe e sedi e nanado, ene Dr. Lej Mamoud Bawamiya ato tu gane si kasem no. E te se ponzi scheme. Ana se 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 ofreno ponzi economy. Ye kase ponzi economy ya. A se chile ne se, ye uwo kurumu ha, ena ye hunu banki bi ba ye. Oba osi u, fesikabra o de ba, basu me mi yansan. Se o de 5,000 ne ba ya, me ma o 20,000. And I say, my mom, 50,000. Na Ghana food yet to the yeah, I bet on Ghana. To say, nee, it is possible, it is possible, I'll be moving a shout on. Into one hour, we'll be the kind of the yet the mom, pepe, pepe. Or more, no more, could the dance, you know. Action dom naba. It is a back of phone put to me, be a bear ten account. It is a dom no ba, nasi kind of be peso. I never chum back on, no crude bra, a dad dinum no. Who chakura in chat? Ene na mwode mwonsa gumiti. Aje ma wu. Aje ma wu. DKM. Aha. Ona bo kwa ku kwa ten. A o kasa ma NPP. Efa NPP si kasa mwon se. Sa ana na naro dan kwa ku fwado. Ene doktor la jima mwudu ba omiya. Aye gana ekonomi mprim prim. Enti se me franka dane. Me kachira wo abreni abreni na se. Na na ado dan kwa aku fwado. Doktor la jima mwudu ba omiya. A se NPP party. E sain, a mamu wo bonen, a mamu wo fon, a mamu wo tantan, a mamu wo mwen me gana fwo hon. Ekonomia, ya de shi e doktor la jima mwudu ba omiyan sa. Ama ekonomi no apro atetia pansam, a e neyi, ya frenu ponsi ekonomi, jonki ekonomi. Ene, en pi pi fwo a mwu dimi a tem no, ene mwen humo bredi fwo. Gana fwo bi mwa mwo se mwo ti e bro chile, se di e, e nimdi fwo a ya bro chile amana ya akon no. Na mu defende na nado dan kwa kufu wado. Ene doktor la jima mudu ba omiya. Ene mwa humu bredi fu. 
na ye ria for ken tv wahunu ye nyankopon ni kosuya se wokan ya nyankopon yi wo ankasa onipa wo twoto mtu no na wa ba be gumu ni mase ene ono abokwa ku kwa ten wo de amunko tie interviews no na mun tie ensema ono abokwa ku kwa ten kaaye na mo fa ntoto ensema maka se meboa na oti ho so ye petrot nyame na apia oka ose se se die odwen se nipa odwen se gana ni na ye de npp ndc no ese gana it is going to be a time gana enya akono ye nyina ye ntumi ntinam nti obeka no kre na ansa na no me pese wo ye gana ni a wo beti sa adwon we ase na kwa kwotio na bokwa kuku aten me se se die npp fuo we are for ken tv ya shemo sen 10 Monso so mache sen, zero. A mama kaibra na ye yon kura yoko sku ayi mache ya. Ye show mwa ye nyuma ye tunye. E ne da hui, e ne da hui. Yanke si ye be she mo. E ne da hui. Envy before. Se me me catch re mo. Me se me, I am the David. And you are the Goriat. And nyaminti mo ko opposition. Ude gana fo yen tiye. Yenara yen asasini. Ye ba. Ni ye kwa kutiyo na bo kwa kuku aten. Enti, uye gane ni mapa, ure mhoye, awase kure gume. Enti, gana yena nanom, di wumuja jisi hono. A, adume ne wososono, di yena yeye atu waso. Nkuntumpu, krono, food soja, food soja, krono. Oh, erade. Na enyumwe, meta abon wamu pro, mi programu. Na masakra magen. Wana wasi ya se wati ya brochiri u. Inti wuti ya nyumwe. Inti wun sakra wagen. Koso. Na odie. Mama yonko nkuti ya wana boku ya kuku aten. Na eno die. Obe sakra wagen. Eh, Joy News. So credit to Joy News. PM Express. Thank you very much for joining us on PM Express tonight. Tonight my guest is Kuku Kwate. Yes. He's a member of parliament for the Boise West. And he's put out an article that has become very topical, explosive even. He's been candid and honest, yes. both as a politician That's and as a Ghanaian. Yes. And I'm pretty sure if we ask him, he'll pretty possibly tell you that this is more being Ghanaian than being a politician. Yes. And he's my guest tonight on PM Express for a very frank conversation about this article that you may or may not have seen. Rukwati, thank you very much. Thank you. And um, for coming to uh, have this interview with me and to give me the opportunity to put some of the views that I have shared uh, across. Uh, welcome to my humble office. And I said, you possibly offered this maybe as a politician, maybe as a Ghanaian, but I argue that you did this purely as a Ghanaian. I think both. Both because there are elements in there that is seeking to get all of us as Ghanaians to pay attention to what I consider to be looming danger. Yes. But as a politician, because I consider that going into an election, if my party would avert their mind to what is of concern to the electorate, and craft a message that addresses what the electorate feel about uh, us politicians, we would be in a better state to get the votes yes. so, and, the and to break the eight. So yes. in that sense, I wrote it as a politician, but I think there's an underlining passion 
that this country is all we have. Yes. We need to live it in a better shape for yes. our children. And if we see danger coming, we have a responsibility to draw attention to it. And for those of you who haven't seen that article, I want to read it. It's actually a short reading, so allow me to do that. Yes, good. Kuku Barton writes, Ghana's Fourth Republic has given ATS ruling parties, not more. Beyond the loyalists of the various political parties, voters believe that when one political party governs for some time, they must leave for another political party to come. The voter belief is coming from something we hear all the time. All politicians are the same. Let one go and let another come. We, MPP, are looking to break the eight. It is an expectation coming at a time when hostile external factors have imposed considerable hardship on the average Ghanaian voter. But it is not just external factors that threaten our chances of electoral victory. The economic problems Ghana is facing today, at both the national level and in households, are also the cumulative F effects of many decades spanning different governments of the bad politics and economic mismanagement that have characterized the governance of our country. Since independence, we have survived by constantly overspending our means and borrowing to finance the overspending. And many of these expenditures are just bad prioritization. We always offer higher interest to lenders, borrow more, use a part to repay previous debts, and the rest to pay for the current year's overspending. So, he says, we have been running our country's economy like a Ponzi scheme. Good. The economy is struggling today because lenders are now refusing to lend to us. It is just like a Ponzi scheme going into crisis once people stop depositing their monies into them. Many Ghanaians, myself included, worry that if we continue along the path we have been walking, our democracy will collapse and it will and with it, all our political parties to save our country from this looming danger, the political class must acknowledge this reality and change behavior. And we don't have time. Since independence, the political norm has been that a political party going into an election must sing praises of its past achievements and make high sounding promises for the future. At the same time, a political party must paint its opponents in the worst possible light. We have mastered this art, and in the process, we are forgetting that politics should be about the future of our children and our motherland. We have reduced election campaigns to bitter struggles between competitors seeking power for the wrong reasons. He continues that it is this primitive political culture that has led to the belief that all politicians are the same and produce the eight-year cycle we are seeking to break. To break the eight, therefore, we must first break that norm by doing the following. One, acknowledge the past and present failures of the political class to provide the kind of quality leadership required to avert the mess in which we find our country today. Adopt deep and far-reaching reforms to address the decades of bad politics and economic mismanagement. We must convince voters that we shall be ruthless in our determination to fix this country, that we shall stay the course no matter the challenges, and that there shall be no sacred cows. We must lead by example as a precondition for any reforms. We must demonstrate sacrifices we shall make as politicians to convince our people that we are in this together. We must address concerns about how much of our national resources we spend on ourselves as politicians and take steps to overhaul the corrupt public procurement regime we inherited from previous governments and have continued to live continue to live with once we lead by example we can say with integrity to our people that we are sinking in a common boat and call all Ghanaians to duty as a political party if we sincerely believe and can demonstrate our faithfulness to these commitments Breaking the eight will follow naturally, he concludes. And Mr. Kwate, you were a former deputy finance minister between 2017 to 2000. Wow. And 2001, after the elections and the swearing in. 
You recently was also the chair of the Finance Committee in Parliament. I'm curious, what inspired this article? Well, to start, I think these are perspectives uh, I have been sharing and others have been sharing in many internal conversations uh, of the party. Yes. I'm not alone in these perspectives. But the reason I wrote this is that we are now discussing how we win the 2024 yes. election. Yes. I, I was here for what you have to ask. Now, we need to ask you Ghana ha, a hiya fo ne mo bro wa fo no, omo umi omo ho. A hu chira sema de ba biya meka mu di mi atema mo pe mi akumi. The same thing, ona bo ko ku kwa tense. NPP impeni fo na angasa, omo ni mi, omo ya we. Ba wu hiya ni mo bro ni wa omo chira ona ye kano. Ono ba be pe ye kuye, ube hu a hiya fo ne mo bro wa fo no. Omo na omo ba be pe, ona bo ko ku kwa tiye kuno. Na ona bo. Sure, who young send people for bad poison welcome what to watch in it. The truth is what I'm telling. And people for any young one send people for bad poison on a book or cook what in. What are you into us? Who want us to win that election badly? And I've been thinking, what is it that Ghanaians want to see before they would have the comfort that these are the people we want to we want to renew the mandate for? When I look around, I see a lot of discontent in our people in respect of how we politicians are working for them. And here, it is not just this the administration, nor is it just the NPP. There is a general sense that the politicians are out for ourselves and that we are not governing to improve the lives of of the citizenry, and I have heard many people warn, especially those of you from the media, that if we walk along that path, we are going to have some explosion at some point. A view of Mr. Sher, which you particularly Now, uh, if this is what is out there, and you want those same people to give you the mandate, then you address it for them. A political party's business is to see what the citizens are looking for and to the extent that it makes sense to deliver so they would intend sign that social contract with us as we're giving you the power. Yes. So all I'm calling my party to do is to listen Good. to the concerns out there and to see if these messages would not be what we should take into the next election. So uh, that is what has prompted us. But I think I'm also motivated by the fact that, uh, I'm speaking in humility, I think I understand the economy. Yes. And I understand where we're going. Yes. And it is, again, not the fault of this particular administration. Where are we going? We're heading for trouble. Good. When I say we are heading for trouble, we are heading for trouble because historically we have cultivated the, the culture of borrowing to survive. It doesn't happen in the lives of individuals. It doesn't happen in the lives of households. It doesn't happen in the lives of countries. Yes. That a particular country says we will always spend money that we do not have spend, overspend our means but somehow we can continue like that and be a developed country it's never going to happen and if we want to avert the danger that some of us are seeing when i say danger it's your country running into a situation where you may not even have sufficient money to buy the things you need to buy from outside and all those things. Yes. It, it, it may not be this administration, but the fact remains that the path that sinks independence we're, we're walking, that path is leading to that danger. And we're beginning to see symptoms of it. Look, if you see the CD struggling against other currencies and you see some of the things that are happening in our economy, we're, we're having to do restructuring. We're having to do that. They are wake-up calls to us that all the wrong things we have been doing in the past 
are now coming to a head. And if you don't change course, it is going to be very painful to correct uh, the, the problem once uh, it becomes uncontrollable. So that is all these have gone to, to urge some of us to promote this kind of conversation within our party. Actually, this piece, I wrote it internally. I, I wrote it for our internal discussions. We did discuss it in a few NPP platforms. That was four days ago. So it was just yesterday that I realized that somehow it's gotten outside NPP circles. And I thought that if I didn't take proactive steps to participate in the conversation and the discussion of this article, people might read, misread it. And the point I want to... I want Ghanaians to hear, and especially my, my, my party people, is this is not a criticism of this administration. If you read the article, I am saying that as a country, we've been walking a certain path, that that path is leading us nowhere. A path, though, that this government has also walked. I think a, a path that I wished that in the last seven years we would have departed from. But have not. Uh, unfortunately, we have not. And what I am saying is better late than never. I mean, I'm curious about, again, understanding the motivations. You say this was an internal conversation. Yes, it was. So well, this is within the NPP. Yes. Um, in what forum? This was a oh, what's up platforms. There are other internal engagements that we've had that I would rather keep quiet for now. But this particular one, was for MPP platforms, and I was hoping that it would shape our own communication with the public so that if it had not come out and generated this kind of debate, you probably would have heard other MPP people articulating it, and it would not even have been known mm -hmm. that I probably started this. That, that was the original idea. But once it got out, I so think... So you say it got out, did somebody take that? Oh, sure. This, I suspect so. Also, for the first time I saw it out, I was a bit unnerved and said, but then it was all over the place. Then I realized the comments that were being made, and you see, you read the whole article, so it's easy to understand what I was saying. If you just picked one line and said, we are running the country like a Ponzi scheme, and then understandably party faithfuls would see it and say, ah, how can you say this about our government? You are, we, we must reform the corrupt public procurement regime. If you read it, I said that we inherited from previous governments. But if you see an article that just says we should correct, or a, a leaflet that just says we should correct the corrupt public procurement regime, it almost to say you are attacking your government. And that is why I find it necessary to step in to make the case that it is our country's future that is at stake. I'm not referring necessarily to this administration, and that I think that as a country we should change course. And last point, this thing is not just for MPP people, even though originally that is where the message in there is good for non-MPP people as well, that the political class is not made up of just MPP people. In fact, I make this point that if you look at parliament right now, Parliament is led by the minority. Yes. Parliament. The, the yes. parliamentary set. I will say I'm for. You bet to us. One who say NPP from Penocre. And ne. Me catch her was a NPP. Led by an another Dunko Kufadan Dr. Leg Mamudu Baumia. Among me Ghana for Mohua. Na Mumu Dimia Tem. A Samo Nabo Kwaku Kwate again. Or say on the NPP platform. And no mood discuss this problem. And no be the Ababo Abonteng. And this is a woman who did me attempt to say, say, party, no, and then one who bred the fool. A year for my mom penocre. A much a fool, a mom penocre. Now, honorable Coco Quarte, Miss Rell, why we are a bacon, and people for bacon. And then, mon for we are for Ken, mon for me Franca Dan and Mebo and Reme, more MP before, mon for me bo and Reme. And a mohun, may say, mon po, mon po, MPP, your co position. Ain't your nabo? Parliament is actually led by the minority. Yeah, so, 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 so. Yes. 
And yet, some of the things I'm complaining about in the executive are found here as well. And you remember in some of the things I have said on the floor in respect of how we should cut expenditure, I have asked Parliament. Yes, I was here for my men for we see from Namia Doma made the explosive expose ever. Nanado Danko Kufuado. Fifty billion dollars. Enche made the Say ne ne ba three point four million dollars pe ena gana fuwe he he me di fifty billion fifty billion dollars uye ma show u si anya no kure me de ba u di akwe me u di tiwi u tiwi ya in our next program me de ba. We can reduce the travels, for instance. We can cut costs. Get live within our means. Let our currency be stable, and then private sector people can generate wealth and give this country the prosperity we need. So I'm not just talking about the NPP. I'm speaking to the political class, but I am hoping that the NPP would lead that conversation because I am I know the NPP more than I do other political parties. I think we have the capacity to digest this, to own it, and to put out in a sincere way. When you first shared it in the group, how was it received by your other colleagues? fairly good so long as it was internal conversation people are quite happy plus you published the whole thing and they were generally it was good and within it, the MPP uh, within, within within most the MPP circles but i have noticed that once there are some who may not have read it there are other party people who may not have been on any of those platforms where it was shared all they are seeing the adentina on the npp platform Mwan kasa munim a hunchira gana fu yukum. Na mun timi me kan chire gana fu. Na mwaye outside gentility hum cry. Unim se bebe kachire wo se. NPP fum penny fon nam grassroot nusu no mo kachire mo se. Se gana fu e kasa a hunchira ba. Mwa mun so so nkambi. O mun pretende. Ene eno na boko kuku ate kano. Mia sembe na makan me kantro. NPP fu no. Mpeni mfuono, omu wankasa. Unsa oswa di bet, odi kwa tuwa osono. No ubiye ni aje. Because Dr. Lejima Mamudu Baumia. Wa say economy no fun from. Si di no aye say hata 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 hata. Ene. Nyame na yedana se. We are for Ken Nyanko Pong. Meda wa say. Meda wa say. Nyame nshirao. Ude yinti yonwa bo. Is a headline that says. Uh, we are running the country like a pawn scheme, and actually, people can't believe it. And some are sending me text messages. Did you and, really and say I'll that? Come to that so you can expand on that point, yeah. concept because it's a powerful head. Yeah. But we'll put this, put this in the proper context. I want to go back to the fundamentals because yeah. you lay a foundation for mm. this. You're the first MPP politician yeah. I have heard who places the current economic crisis within its comprehensive context. Yeah. Yes, you point to the global circumstances which is a fact but you don't stop there most of your colleagues will stop there mm. say ukraine who say mm. the pandemic mm. and and stop there but you go on because you've heard that already so that's not it but you go on to tell us that the economic problems ghana is facing today at both the national level and the households are also the cumulative effects of many decades spanning different governments of bad politics and economic management that have characterized the governance of our country. So to put it in context, you say you can go all the way back as just after independence mm. and track it all the way down. Mm. Two things, bad politics, economic mismanagement. Mm. Give me an example of what you mean by bad politics. Well, let me just even pick it from what you said. Why is it that our country may have been facing economic challenges because there's a global context, but also because of the way we have done things. And we know that traditionally we have been borrowing to survive and that to deal with the problem would mean we need to go and tackle those fundamentals. Because you see, when COVID came, everybody got affected. But post COVID is showing us that those countries that had stronger immune system were affected less by the pandemic. Yes. Those countries with weak immune systems were more 
harshly affected. So why do we not want to deal with those fundamentals? So if you hear opposition politicians saying it is all about mismanagement of just this regime, that's how they put it, when we know that this culture predates the current regime. And then you have people on the government side, and indeed uh, the opposition people even disagree that there's any sector as external factors, when we all know that we have indeed been impacted adversely by external factors. Then you flip it on the government side, we want to say that it's all external factors. And that but for external factors, the country was doing fine. When again, the records would show that indeed we had been managing this economy with a culture that is unsustainable. Our inability on both sides of the political divide to face up to what the reality is and devise strategies to deal with the problems is part of the bad politics I'm talking about. And even as this statement has come out, it is not, you would see people taking just portions because you're in the opposition. And letting it look like you are just referring to this administration in order to score political points. I remember telling a friend of mine who is not in NPP, who showed me one of the leaflets. And I said, so of, upon all the things I said about the future of our country, the fact that there's a looming danger because of the way we have been managing the economy, you were not touched. All that you find in what I wrote is that small piece that would win you political advantage, let's say for one election. So there's a certain, a certain disconnect of people from what we ought to be doing to improve the future of our children and to improve the future of our motherland. And I see that as bad politics, we put a lot of things before the collective good. And that I consider to be bad politics. And it is because of that we have then had to make decisions sometimes to serve partisan interests on both sides, it predates this administration, even though we also have to accept our fair share of the blame. We make decisions that we know may not help the country as a whole, but we think the narrow advantage it brings us is what we are interested in for now, and then our country pays the price subsequently. That is what I call the bad politics. But you understand why that focus will be on, well, this government in the last seven years, because you've been part of it as a deputy finance minister, you've been the chair of the finance committee in parliament, and you say that second is economic mismanagement. Mm. You accept that that is also a verdict on the last seven and a half years. Well, I, I preceded it by saying spanning decades across different governments. Now, what I mean is, you know, this behavior is a cultural thing. So you see it in, look, if we go to the MAMA administration, there were a number of political decisions with economic consequences that we all discussed and, and, and criticized. We are hearing similar criticisms against this government. So... The reason I am reluctant to turn this into a criticism of one regime is that then it gives the impression that merely changing that regime solves the problem. If really all the problems we are discussing facing Ghana today is the result of something this administration has done wrong, then Ghana does not really have a problem. All you have to do is to vote against the government, and then and, and our heaven comes. But you and I know that that is not enough. And what I am saying is that there should be more to our efforts than assessing governments and voting people in. And look, politicians can go in and out, in and out, in and out, and yet the people would continue to get a bad deal. So what I am calling for, and the reason I say we should span it across the, the, the whole time, that it is a cultural thing. And look, I have seen enough to tell me that sometimes it is not even so much which political party is in power. It is what individuals have power to do and what they want to do. They may be in which party, they may be in which party. If they, are, they, they have a weak sense of, of patriotism, it doesn't matter the political party in which they find themselves. They can do very bad things. So that 
the discussion should be the thing the political class has been doing wrong the whole time and how we stop that culture. That how, is do you, how do you stop it? Because elections offers you an opportunity. In fact, you please in the context of an election. Yes. Right? But I hear you say, both the NDC and the MPP, bad politics, economic management. Both of you are fit for purpose. Well, I do not think you can have aliens coming to govern us. Not the third force, maybe? I'm, I'm coming. That third force, if they come, and the systems and the cultures and the pressures of government that we see today is what they're going to operate within. Trust me, the outcomes will not be any different, even if a third force was really possible. What I think should happen is for a political party like the NPP that have people that think like I am doing to say this is our own country, it is our motherland, and this yes. is where we draw the line. Yes. And we will begin to do the reforms that ultimately will place us on the path to prosperity. Yes. I am I am more willing to invest my energies in that project than to imagine that there can be an external party to do this. After all, we saw in 1979, 1981, people come and say, they are the saviors. And it turned out that today, we will look back and say, were well, these guys really the saviors? I think the answer does not lie in just changing human beings. The answer lies in those human beings who are here right now, recognizing that the path we have been walking uh, has not been a good one and committing to change. And I think when you set the, the systems in motion, if NPP, we can commit and be clear in the reforms we want to do, and Ghanaians would, we do it credibly, I think Ghanaians would believe us, they would give us the break in the eight we want. Yes. I'm coming, uh, uh, let me land on this. And once they give that to us, and we will be true to the commitments we made before the election and effect those changes. It is not easy for another party to come to roll things back. So whatever it is, we have a responsibility to initiate the new Ghana that we are envisaging. And that is where I think the NPP has the capacity to do it, has the men to do it. But they haven't done it. Per your own verdict in the last seven and a half years. Yeah, but if you are, you, if you are, then if they haven't done it in seven and a half years, they can't do it in four months on election. But you can't know. Uh, of course, I know. Look, there are some of the changes that I, for instance, would call for uh, that cannot be done in four months. You know, when I wrote that we should embark on deep and far-reaching reforms, I did not really indicate what some of those reforms would be. When I want to leave that discussion to the collective effort. But I am one of those who believe that do we need 275 members of parliament? Do we, the expenditures, and when I say we should lead by example, are there areas we can cut to demonstrate to our people that we are in this together and therefore let's move? So. It would require a lot of sometimes constitutional, sometimes legislative to effect some of the changes that I'm envisaging. But if you go out there and to say, look, we want to depart from the past and acknowledge sincerely that what we have been doing wrong cannot continue and now begin to lay out the changes you would make and where possible, where possible, I mean, look, there are many of these developed countries that give us money. Mm. If you are a minister or you are an ambassador here and you're traveling, you are not allowed to travel business class. You have to travel economy. We are a poor country. We want to go to those people. But even directors of ministries think that when they are traveling, they must travel business class at the expense of the state. At the expense of the state. I think those things, they are little, little things, but they are signals we can deploy to begin to show that indeed charity is beginning at home. So that part of the, uh, of the statement I wrote was, was summarized. So I said, let's do 
uh, far-reaching reforms. And I'll come to one of them after the other, because I think you go through that, mm. you think they need to do yeah, every day, and sure, I'll come to that sure. and, and measure it against what is currently happening uh, in your government. Because that so, is very specific. So, so, so then to summarize my answer... To, to the party yeah. as it goes into the elections. But I want to go to the big issues, okay. some of the All big right. issues that you touch on, which is running the economy like a Ponzi scheme. Yes, yes. I mean, and, and this is a former deputy finance minister saying this. First of all, keep it honest, you admit that that is an indictment on yourself. I, I, yes, uh, I, it is to the extent that I'm, I've been a politician, I've been in the Ministry of Finance, I've been in Parliament. I think I accept part of the blame. Okay. And what did you do about it then? That's or, or when did you realize that this was actually happening? I've always known that some of the things we've been doing are wrong. And if you listen to my debate on the floor, you go back to YouTube, you see, you see that some of these things, I keep saying them. In fact, after this statement, if things don't change, and let's say in a year's time, I say these things, people are going to say, but when you saw it, what did you do about it? We can only continue pushing these conversations, hoping that we will change sufficient minds to get people to support the changes that we want to see. But I accept, and that is when I say the political class must accept that we have failed to provide the kind of quality leadership that the country needs, and that we should be able to draw the line and say we are changing behavior. It should not be too hard for us. And I end on this. Even in our individual lives, you could be leading a certain life. You could be having a certain lifestyle, and you like it. But at some point, you take stock of your circumstances and say, this thing is not helping. Going forward, I won't do it again. Why can we not do that as a country? If we go to the Ghanaians and say, look, we have been doing this, but we think things must change. Why would Ghanaians, Ghanaians will be happy? Look, these statements that are issued, and I listen to people out there, and they, they love it. They just want their politicians to do this for them. Yes. Why can we not just do this? And even harmless statement like this, just calling us to be true to our own people, still people have room to find fault with it. That's what I call the bad politics. So I think NPP, we can do it. And I would continue to push for the conversation internally and hope that there will be sufficient numbers to affect the way MPP wants to present itself in the next election. The next elections. And between 2017 and 2021, mm. was this something that you knew was happening? I've always known that the way we were borrowing to survive was 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 wrong. And if we to your boss, did you make this point here? You know, uh, let me also make this point. I see where the conversation is going. And you know, the media people, you're also part of the politics, all right? Look, when I see the dangers ahead, the fact that if we fail to change course, the dangers and how we are endangering our whole democracy, we should begin to examine the strategies to get it out of this. You can go on and ask me about specifically Kenneth Oriata and Nanado Danko Akufuado. When you do that, people become defensive. A project to help deal with the challenges my country is facing is redirected into personal discussions about how did you feel, how did you feel about this. The result is that we take energy away from what we ought to do to give ourselves a good country and to end in these matters. So I'm telling you that, look, let's move away from you personally, I may, this thing may well have been said by somebody in academia. The fact that it is coming from me and I've been in the ministry, for the media and the way you guys have operated, I think it's a legitimate question. But if we are going to change course, the media too has to examine the way they've been interacting with state managers and not get us. In fact, since this discussion started, your interview has been very good. There are people who are just interested in finding MPP and DC in this. Yeah. And I say that immediately you reduce this whole discussion into personal and, and partisan ones. 
then my job is to defend my party. Mm. Hey, so so help, help me, you, help me I to that question steer only. away from... <laughs> the message is as important as the messenger, right? And people need to believe in the credibility of the messenger. You're raising some very important but fundamental I... issues about our collective futures as a mm. country. But you, you were in a position to make some mm. changes mm. and to influence change because you had power then. Beyond personalizing and saying what you did with your boss, mm. what did you do with your government to get them to see the importance of this matter? To see why running the economy like a poison scheme was damaging and may lead us down the path we are currently on. People want to people want to hear you say that I tried and now I am not in government. I am necessarily not a minister, and it's time to go public. That is how people hang on to your word and say they can fight with you because this man did it when he was in power. That's why that question is fundamental. So I ask the question again, beyond Ophoriata, did you take steps when you were there as a deputy finance minister, knowing that under your watch, under his watch, under Cabinet's watch, you're running the government, you're running the economy as a Ponzi scheme to draw the attention. I have always drawn. You see, if you, I think to start with, it's, it is not fair on the people with whom I work in government to bring out what I said and what who said and whether I was taken. I don't think it's necessary. But did you? I did. Look, and it is not just even before government. Look, I used to write a column called Aflache when I was in a, when I was a student. You see some of these themes there. It is something I've always believed in. When I was in the ministry, I would always bring my sensitivity to expenditure to bear on the discussions. All right. People may have had various reasons for agreeing or disagreeing with me. You say that sometimes the message is as important as the messenger. That is when we are not clear about the message. That is when you begin to look at the messenger and to see whether this message we should accept. When the message is as clear as daylight, you're giving people haircut. You are doing this. Your city is dropping. You yes. say that we are going to a ditch and you don't want us to, not you. Instead of focusing on how we change course, you now want to focus on the messenger. <laughs> By the time you would have finished analyzing the messenger, the country uh, would have lost some time. My yes. respectful suggestion to not just you, but the media, is that let us also try and do a different kind of media. Yes. Because we have been used to politicians fighting and you standing in the middle and, and, and asking people to respond and I think we should also now begin to even call out politicians who are so partisan. And, 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 and therefore, uh, spare me, what I have put out, it is from the bottom of my heart. I definitely want to see these changes made. I cannot go home and I see my kids and I hug them and I come to work and I come and make decisions or support decisions that would hurt their future. I can't live with that. And I need everybody, yourself included, to help us change the future for our children. I want to take a break. When I return, it's four months from election. We'll go through what he proposes. His party. I was young for, in fact, Honorable Koku Kwate, Nyankopon in Shirano. He has shown that indeed we have politicians in this country. But media, I always say, Kiana can Ghana, you better Ghana see her. But also to finance the current year's over expenditures. As far as I am concerned, and this is this is what we have been doing since independent independence. And as far as I'm concerned, it's a Ponzi scheme. It's only a Ponzi scheme that relies on future borrowings to pay off previous borrowings. A proper borrowing is when you take money and you invest it so that the returns from that would pay off the debt you incurred. Then you know that you are borrowing wisely. You say it's a Ponzi scheme. So to put it in the layman's language, and many people understand this, you mean it's a scam? Well, it is not a scam because 
Well, in a, in the case of a Ponzi scheme, you, you, you would say it's a scam. But you see, in the case of a country, the investors, they know your economy. They understand everything, and they are still giving you the money with the, in hopes that you would pay them back. But now, so, so caught up with us. I'm coming. We're able to pay them. Exactly. So what happens in respect of the national Ponzi scheme, if you like, is that the investors come to a point when you are going to them to say, the money you gave us, we cannot give you everything. We can only give you a part. That is what signals that things are coming to a head. And so, as I indicated, no Ponzi scheme lasts forever. This culture of borrow to spend and a perpetual deficit year after year is unsustainable. It's very unsustainable. And I, that's why I think in some of these discussions too, the ultimate... But why do governments do that? Because it must be obvious. Governments do that because of bad politics and just fiscal misbehavior. It is this, that you just want to do things. People like to sign contracts, all right? We enjoy signing contracts and, and all that goes with it. We, we like to spend and people want stuff. You want the vote. So you just go spending without pausing to say that I may well spend today and get whatever I want in the short run. In the long run, what is its impact on my country, on the economy? If you don't avert your mind to that and you just want to do some quick fixes, that gives you some immediate results, which ultimately would hurt your country. I call that bad politics. And we've done a lot of it uh, no, as a no. country in the past before this administration. And every Ponzi scheme eventually collapses. will collapse. Ghana, Alice is coming to a head. Look, well, when it's you already, see. It has already collapsed. Yeah, so. I was young for a sorry. I was young for a sorry. Not, not for the first time in, in forever, we've done domestic debt exchange. Yes. It's never happened before. That is the mother of all collapse. Look, things could get worse. It could. I'm telling you that if we continue to spend money we do not have, are we still doing that, by the way? Are we still spending money we don't have, even as we try and manage this crisis? Well, I think our expenditures are still more than our revenues, even under the media review that was presented. But I concede that, you know, you need to come out gradually. And I'm happy. I looked at the data before we had this meeting, and I realized that the deficit figure for projected for 2024 it's one of the lowest in the last 10 years. And of course, in the circumstances, you're not really in a position to spend. That is a good thing. I hope that we would gradually go there, go there, go there. But I also look around and I see, I see a lot of things within the political class that suggest to me that we are not spending because people are not giving us the money. And that if we're going to be giving the money, we probably would spend. That is why I think this conversation is important. That you mean if we get the money, we will spend? If people were willing to lend as money, I suspect that the deficit figure would have been bigger than it is. And and I don't know, maybe, maybe. But you see, that is where this conversation should catch on. If we were now beginning to reduce our deficit, not so much because we do not have money, but because we realize that there are people even willing to give us money, but we say, hold on, we want to spend within our means, or we want to reduce the gap gradually to a balanced budget. Then I am hopeful. At the moment... You're not hopeful? At well, the moment, you're not hopeful? At the moment, we need this to solidify that hope. You need, we need this, this discussion. Yes, we need, on we need... We need... And the movement around this Look, to I force politicians I, to, to do the things you're prescribing they do. I don't believe... I don't believe that good economy would happen uh, by chance. How would it happen? It would happen after a deliberate decision has been made to change the behavior of overspending our means, prioritizing our expenditures, unless there is a clear commitment to do those things. Then when I begin to see the outcomes, I know that this is a product of a changed Ghana. Let me ask you, you know your, 
your political friends, your politician friends, and your colleagues. Mm. You've been a politician mm. a long time. Mm. You think you're willing to do this by themselves or somebody external needs to compel them? I think there's greater goodwill towards this discussion than it's obvious. There are people, look, the politicians, even within the NPP, mm. also care about Ghana. And many of them, since I've been having this discussion, this discussion didn't start four days ago when this came out. We've been having this discussion internally. And there are many who support this. It gives me hope that if we keep having this conversation, we're going to come to a point where we're going to have sufficient numbers of us begin to press for this. It may not happen overnight, but incrementally we will begin to see more prudent economic management behavior. And then we will be confident that the future would look good. When you see more of you, more politicians are getting ordinary Ghanaians in your corner. We've seen change happening in mm. Kenya. It didn't happen because a few politicians well, well, were to well, do by yes. themselves. Kenya was lucky in the sense that after the disturbances, calm was restored. And then the, the political class now had the opportunity to do some of the things that they should have done long, long ago. Do we need that? All right. I don't think we need the disturbances begin, before we begin to do the things that Kenya is doing after the disturbances. After all, in many respects, uh, Kenya's economy is not in the kind of difficulty we are in now. And so I'm asking, why are we waiting to have some disturbances of sorts or anything? We should take the bull by the horns and do what is needful and I am saying that my party should own that conversation, lead it in the Ghana contest, take it to the election, win the election, and fix the problem. That's what I need to ask you. Currently, your party is in power. Mm. So when you say the economies have been run like a Ponzi scheme, it's also... Historically. Historically, yes, true. But it's also a comment and a verdict on the way it's been running the last seven and a half years. You can see that. I can see that, that we've been following that path. Yeah. And that, coming from you, and in is, any is case, powerful. It is, it's, it is, it's a powerful it is, indictment on the administration. Well, look, let me put it this way. I can show you data that shows how much we earn and how much we borrow in order to survive for each year. I may well, if I want to be partisan, say, well, but under this administration, it has been different. The data is there. If you pick our budget, you would see it. It hasn't so, been different. It hasn't been different. The deficit figures has been like that. And that now, is can what, I put it to you? Yes. That it's actually been worse in the last seven and a half years than it's ever been in our history. Well, you know... Don't forget that in the last seven years, there have also been events that have never happened in our history. All right? We all just accepted that the COVID-19 and the hostile global environment have imposed special burdens on us. And therefore, if you say, I have not looked at the figures in that sense yet, but if you say that it has been worse, I would attribute it to that. But honestly, honestly, I look at this administration, I look at previous administration, I am not convinced, deep down my heart, that this administration is any worse than the previous ones. I, I don't believe, I hear people say that, but of course they are, they may be political adversaries and they may say all these things. But trust me, essentially, essentially, this government has been very much like previous Ghanaian governments, essentially. In so the, the point you make it even as worse as previous governments? As, but then the English should be the, the, as bad as previous government. As bad as previous government. <laughs> but, 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 but. I want to go to your yeah, prescription. Yeah. Your prescription for how they can break the aid. You say, one, they must first acknowledge the past and present failures. The political class. They, yes. Acknowledge, in fact, you, this is, uh, this, 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 this is this to, your, okay. to your party right. now. This is, you are addressing your party. Mm, yeah. They must acknowledge the past, as in your party must acknowledge the past and present failures of the political class. Mm. And you actually saying they don't only acknowledge your failure, acknowledge the failures of everybody else other than the MPP. Yes, past okay. and present. Mm. To provide the kind of quality leadership required to avert the mess mm. in which we find our country today. Mm. 
you think it's it is in your party's leadership to acknowledge the past and present feelings of themselves and others before them well you don't have to say that we have failed okay the things i have been saying imply that anyway mm. i am saying that we have been spending money we do not have and the data is clear and the debt figures going up our foreign debts going up and the fact that we can no more service the debts these are public these are facts in the public domain already without using the expression of we have failed and we can say look this part we have been working has been wrong it is what is producing some of the instability in the cd and and therefore let it be npp all right that calls the system to order but you say they must acknowledge first and that's what i mean so you, we, we, we acknowledge that to acknowledge a failure is to say the path i have been walking has not been helpful and that there's a need to change course who, now, must, who must do this we there's nothing wrong with we putting that information out and saying that because of this over expenditures and the lack of proper prioritization of our expenditures these are the measures we are putting in place to avert that i know you use we mm. but in every organization for change to happen among the leadership who must lead this among your ranks once we've had a discussion any anybody you know among our ranks you must understand that the finance minister for instance will implement things from cabinet cabinet is made up of people they listen to what the party is saying I think as MPP, as an organization, we can have this internal conversation. And if, for instance, we get sufficient numbers in the National Council, we get sufficient people in the campaign team to say this is something we must do, then it is easy to proceed to make the, have the discussion. Should Palmyra do this? But, but if he wants to break the eight, because that's your prescription MPP, to the party. MPP, please, you see. But let, let, let's, 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 I mean, leadership, let's, let's, leadership let's, is important. Leadership I, 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 I won't answer it that way. Look, I think the NPP must do it. And if uh, it takes people like me, my colleagues, to initiate and gradually others come on board, that would be good. Immediately you begin to isolate specific persons. You introduce other elements into the discussion. But and then, how, and then you, don't, you don't get... Because you, you, your point is very specific. To yeah. break the eight, yeah. therefore, mm. we must... Honorable, we... Is a straight bullet to Dr. Elijah Mahmoud Baumia. Because you run another damn quick for the Maya who knew Kurumu has said, Dr. Elijah Mahmoud Baumia is economic misaya. And also, so the economic lectures are my way. Now, and the economy no, I a Ponzi schema. We dear Dr. Elijah Mahmoud Baumia, rest in peace. Doctor, rest in peace. This is a straight bullet for you. We dear Mumayan Twaso, I can't cry. You may be able to say, yeah. First, and you list. Somebody must. I said Somebody the party, in an official. The, the party I, I is the party. a very amorphous uh, yeah. entity. You know, let me say that, that has individuals you put there with authority yeah. that can say to all of you, mm. "This is what the party stands for," and the person speaks for the entire group. Mm. Somebody must do this. The general secretary, the presidential candidate, or the incumbent president. Who? Our national council is made up of all these people, all right? And if this message, for instance, goes to the national council, they will debate it as a team. Once they debate it, whoever has the responsibility to implement the decision will do their work. It is completely unhelpful. If I now sit here and almost to say, it doesn't matter what any other person in the party feels. Mm. One person should just take this up and do it. I think you you create a difficulty in getting general acceptance for it. And that is why I'm not going to answer that question except to say that we would continue having this discussion internally. We will be happy if this can be uh, done. Uh, those ones that are, we are capable of doing within these four months, we can demonstrate it. Those ones that would require some planning, we can signal our intention, I say that the communication can reflect whether we really mean to do this or that that we are just saying something for the election. I think we are capable of believing this and also communicating in such a way that is credible, that will make us believable, 
and make breaking the eight much easier. Are, are your people capable of acknowledging the past and present failures? You know, you know your. Yeah, people. I'm one of them, and I am not the best person in if the. If I put it to you, yes, that you are a lone ranger publicly. Yeah. Because I know you've told me that yes. private comments have been happening yes. publicly. You lone ranger on this. Would you disagree? Uh, I would disagree because some of the ideas you see here. Well, if you say in terms of the public Publicly, discussion, but don't, don't, but don't even, if you were, think carefully, there are many people from the stock of the NPP, all right, that have been saying similar things about our own government. I don't want to mention them. You just reflect on that. You would see so you know that I'm not the only person calling for those, these changes. In these stark terms, you are well, 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 the Stark terms or no stark terms. There are people who have come ahead of me who have made these statements. My voice is coming after theirs. We will continue to have that discussion, and I am confident that at some point we're going to get sufficient numbers to speak for this. Point two, mm. adopt deep and far-reaching reforms to address yes. decades of bad politics and economic mismanagement. Yes. But you go further. You must convince voters that yes. you shall be ruthless. And there will be no sacred cows. Yeah. The yeah. Ghanaian politician has no rootlessness in them. Not in the MPP, not in the NDs. We've seen all of you before. Yeah. This is utopia. I put it to you. But it's worth it's worth fighting for it. Well, at least I you mean, admit all, all, the, all those, well, I, I don't, but I don't want to debate you on that. You see, all ideas that bring about change initially are seen to be utopian that it will never happen this is how we've done it the whole time i'm sure even before we had independence if somebody had come and said we could with some radical input get independence immediately people would have said it's not possible look if it is a good idea it is worth giving it a shot mm. how or when we get the results we leave it to God, but it is definitely worthwhile putting in energy to make sure that the things you see as ideals get to happen. Between now and December 7, give me your top priority suggestion for this far reaching reform you want to see between now and December. I don't want to get into those discussions. You see, I, I can do and, and I've just indicated that I think, for instance, that we should cap. The number of members of parliament, some of those clear structural adjustments in our expenditure basket, we can look at them. There are a number of them, but you see, before you bring people to the table, for all of us to dialogue and to see what reforms we want to do, if you start mentioning some, a number of them that I can suggest, but if you start mentioning some of them, you may take attention away from the fact that there is the need to create the platform and to set into process into motion the process to do that i would not go into those except to say that look politicians must and maybe that goes to the third point that before any reforms would be believed and before we will get public buy -in, we must demonstrate in these communications what sacrifices we are starting with we must start the reform with ourselves if we are able to do that well then people would say these guys mean business and it is worth giving them the mandate to with, with four months to go your verdict is that that you haven't seen that is that even realistic to expect that within the next four months you can putting together the message and making the commitment it's, it does not take that long and i think even if you have your manifesto out already there are specific things you would want to do to let the electorate believe that the future will be different. I don't see why you cannot put it even within a month. The more difficult part is getting the internal conversation to arrive at that conclu conclusion more easily. Mm. That's a difficult part, but once there's agreement, even if whatever time is available to us, I think we should signal that the future will be different from the past. Four months ago, too late? Better late than ever. You sincerely believe better, better later never because the alternative to what you your, your what is implied in your question is 
it's too late, so don't do anything. It, it, that's too difficult for me. We, I, I we watched the campaign some... trail. Yeah. I have seen no signal that any of this. You've not seen our manifesto will yet. Be, will be champion. You, you've not seen our manifesto yet. I've heard your candidate elaborate mm. in quite extensive terms mm. what his key policies are when he launched mm. after he was voted for he mm. did a national address you remember this we covered this thanks and he laid out his vision yeah of course i see i, I expect that you fleshing this out in your yeah. manifesto i haven't seen or had anything from him or anybody else in your campaign that comes close to what you're proposing and you have four months ago well, so it's the reason maybe we need to um, push this conversation more forcefully within the party. I mean, um, I do not think that there's sufficient reason in these proposals for anybody to think they are bad ideas, all right? And so I don't foresee the difficulty, but let me make this point. So what? So given the way people are talking and on our campaign platforms it does not look like it comes close to this so give up and go and sleep i can't do that are you, push this debate are you disappointed in the way your party run its campaign so far i'm disappointed in the way the political class has managed this country since independence i'm calling on all my colleagues from all shades of the political divide to reflect on the fact that if we do not change course and this country degenerate into a destabilized democracy, our political parties will not exist. You know the law of unintended consequences, you mean well. Yes. But you also admit that what you've altered, considering your standing in the party, mm. is ammunition with four months to go mm. to your opponents to use against your party, considering that you were once a former deputy finance minister, mm -hmm. a chair of the finance committee, yeah. you say the yeah. yeah. economies have been run like a Ponzi scheme. You've talked about the fact that failures have been have been have been made, sacrifices and and to now. You admit that the law of unintended consequences exactly places you really in the in the crosshairs of your own, but also in, favorably in the eyes of your opponents who will use your words against your party. I, I disagree, and let me explain. Let the MPP go out to say, as politicians, we think we have been managing this country wrongly since independence. We think what the people are calling for is legitimate. Accordingly, this is our response to what people feel about us, politicians. We are doing this, we are doing this, we are doing this. And let the opposing political parties come to say, no, politicians, we've done very well. And let's see who Ghanaians will believe. So that which you are calling a weapon, is no weapon. In fact, I think it is risky. Some of these things I have put here. It is very risky for any politician to get up and to say it is not true. People are not unhappy with us politicians. People are very happy with the way we have governed this country since independence. People are happy with the kind of economy we've had and all that. Let's see, I would like to debate anybody from the opposition who says these ones is an indictment on us, but as for them, they don't agree. And let's see whose side the Ghanaian will take. Maybe you should start with yourself. If another politician comes and says the things quite put out rubbish we don't agree as for us ndc or cpp or whatever we think the politicians have been acting right and therefore vote for us and let's see who gets the support of the people you were a former deputy minister but you lost your job after 2021 yeah. are you better and that's why you have gone decided to go public now with these no, but if I, if, I, if I was going to be better, I would have been better three years and a half ago. So the question is, why now? Uh, because... When, when, when it hurts the most, with just four months on election. Well, no, I'm just making the point that I have no reason to be hurt. And I have made the point again that I am contributing to a message I think we should carry to the election. I could not have said uh, three years and a half ago that when we get to 2024, I think we should be communicating these messages. So... Uh, why now? That is the point. But look, 
I don't have any reason to be bitter. I came to Parliament in 2012 and I was put in what many consider to be the prestigious finance committee. The following four years, we had power. I was put in the Ministry of Finance as a Deputy Minister for Finance. Look, in, 2000, in 2021, when Parliament became depleted of all the finance guys, and you can count, all the finance guys either lost their primaries or the bid election, the leaders of my party and government said to me that you need to go and support government's work in Parliament. And then I came here. After three years, I was invited again to say, look, we need you to go and support uh, the Ministry of Finance again, this time in even a superior capacity. And I said, look, there are some things we are doing in Parliament to support the same government, so please uh, let me remain here. So you were given the appointment? I was given the appointment. As a deputy finance minister? No, as a, a minister of state at the Ministry of Finance. And I. That's an elevation. That was an elevation, but it wasn't the point. Even if it was deputy, so long as you're there to contribute to the work, it would have been fine. But the reason I declined was that I wanted to concentrate on the support we're giving government from parliament, and that is why I turned it down. Now, why then would you be bitter about what? If I felt that strongly about being removed from the ministry, as soon as it was suggested to me, I would have grabbed it. I said no. So why will I be bitter? Look, what gives me sleepless nights is to see the way we have been managing our economy and to look into the future, trying to find a path to recovery and start fearing that I might leave Ghana that is worse than it is for my children. That gives me sleepless nights. And that is what is motivating some of the things that I am saying. And I'm only asking my party that it is a concern of many Ghanaians as well. Yes. So if we will own it as our mission in the 2024 elections, the majority of Ghanaians will be on our side. Mm. I'm daring the, anybody who is a politician who says they want to get the people's vote to come and dispute the things I have put here. Good. Because these are realities. The fact yes. that we've been managing this country like a Ponzi scheme since independence, the fact that we have turned contests for political power into some competition. You wouldn't think, the way we even compete for power, sometimes you would think we, we, we're fighting for our daily bread rather than our survival, rather than the opportunity to improve the system for everybody. I call that bad politics, I refer it uh, to, to that as primitive political culture. I think we must correct that. And it is what I want to see, even if I don't get it to the extent that my idealistic mind can imagine, at least I want to see a certain movement towards that ideal. And then the people of this country will be happier with us. But I take this opportunity again to remind my colleagues, especially in the NPP, who think this is a weapon for the opposition. If anybody from the opposition picked up anything from here, say, ask that opposition whether he disagrees or he agrees with the fact that the political class has failed, and let the people pass their verdict. I think the facts are there for all to see. I, I, I listen to Joy, I listen to your channels, and I hear politicians, there's we can't find even one data. I listened to what you guys call editorial. And I was there also yeah. said, I was looking for just one good politician, and I couldn't find any. You live in a country where people have this attitude towards politicians. You're going into an election to ask those same people to vote for you. You say you don't want to make that concession. You the one good politician in the midst of I'm just like, battles. look, I'm, 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 in the, uh, I'm just like any other politician. All I am saying is that we have all collectively been doing the wrong things for so long. Let us all change course. Have you suffered right for this, though? Because it was just recently your colleagues in the minority told us yeah. that they were gunning to remove you yes. as a finance committee chair. True? Yes, I had, I had those suggestions. Were you removed at the Finance Committee Chair because of these views you hold? Uh, if, if 
I was going to be removed from the finance committee chair because I hold these views. Then the suggestion would not have come to me to go and sit in the Ministry of Finance. But this was recent. So at the time that suggestion was being made to me, I was a more liberal finance committee and within a space of about three months. I changed, and that is why, look. Specifically, they mentioned the mention you know, your opposition to the tax exemptions that came before your committee. Well, it's not just tax exemptions that I had some reservations so about. So you had reservations that. about that? Oh, I did. And I, I have communicated that. Um, there were other referrals that, it is not every referral that you say, I'm opposed to it. Some you say, if we can do these adjustments, or if we can turn it this way, if we can turn it this way. But in respect of the tax waivers, I did make the point that when you isolate specific companies within industries and parliament grants them tax waivers, you, you hurt their competitors in the same industry. So if we want to abolish taxes for industries, it should be for everybody. Then nobody has to go and see somebody to be brought to parliament to be given tax exemption. So I was not even against the tax exemptions per se, but I was trying to contribute to my government's own treatment of how we promote investment. It was, for me, a friendly conversation. So you stalled, it, the, it, you stalled the approval process, the acquisition? No, we asked more questions and, and, and hoped that government... Uh, the sponsoring ministries were going to improve it. There were some improvement, but we continue having those discussions mm. until I left the, the, the committee. Well, the, not a rumor anymore. Mm. Was the, what we now know from your own folks, and in some cases your minority guys on the committee, mm. that you were reshuffled under the guise of the new standing orders because of this specific opposition. Well, I don't know. But, but I, I think... Um, my position on many of these referrals would date back to when I started being the finance committee chair. It is the most pronounced one. Even the president had to call the minority to a meeting at Jubilee. They came out to tell us that this is one of the things the president put before them. I, that they should support I, I don't know. I prefer to think. I don't know what is going on in people's minds. But I prefer to think that in the light of the new committees that had to be formed, changes had to be made. Leadership had their own reasons. I am happy for the assignment they have given me under the new standing orders, and it is my job as an MPP man to do that well. As to what may have motivated what, you can go into people's minds, and I don't want to be guessing. So you're happy being a member of the committee? I'm completely happy, and, and, and the work we do in Parliament is not just committee chair. Sometimes you are consulted on issues, and there are things that would come here that relate to the uh, budget and the economy in a way that you are considered to have some knowledge, I would definitely be invited to offer ideas. We will continue to do that. That's no problem. Are you going to be on the campaign trail yourself? I am a... Beyond, in your, beyond your constituency, I mean, Uba, so are you going to be... Well, I'm on, the, I'm on the manifesto committee. I'm on the manifesto committee to start with, but being a candidate... At least finding expression in the manifesto that will be launched, we understand in others. I can go ahead my, of my superiors and indicate what is in there. Let's wait and see what's in there. But the point I'm making is that being the parliamentary candidate and campaigning for the president in your constituency, it's a big contribution to the campaign in a way. If we have to craft um, our messages out of our manifesto, we'll be there to provide whatever support we can provide. We are confident we are winning this election, and I think that if we would add this to our messages, it makes it much easier for us. To I read it. your message, and the message I get is, you only break the eight if you do these things that you suggested. True? Am I reading well, it right? Well, well, well it, it, you make it more certain. If you read the last I said it would follow more. But but look, there was you say, that, that, yeah, that, let's that, read it. Once you lead by example, we can say with integrity to our people that we are sinking a common boat and call the Guinness to duty. Then as politicians, uh, I think the point you're making there is that it will follow naturally. Naturally. As poli as a political party, if we sincerely believe and can demonstrate our faithfulness mm, mm. to these commitments mm. and we've already gone through them. Mm. Breaking the aid will follow naturally. Yeah. So it's very clear. So it, 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 it will be easier. Okay. It will be easier. No, yeah, you say no. Without, no, no, but, without but let me tell you. 
look, we are if we were competing against another political party that has adopted this, all right. If we adopt this, I think it elevates us above the other political if parties. If you don't adopt it, if we are don't don't adopt it, then it is a traditional fight between two political parties in an election. Race to the bottom. And 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 that is what I fear. That then, but will you, you, do, you, you do not make it as certain. Look, you don't know what results you're going to have. We hope we would win. We hope we would win the election. I don't know for certain. And therefore, I, I will not speak in that language. But I don't want that to get in the way of this. I think that even beyond the election, we need this anyway. Mm. Whether or not it's for election or not, these changes must happen for the sake of our children. Mr. Kwasi, thank you very much. Thank you too very I'm much. Grateful. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. Abu Sufyan, for we did yet that Obi Biase said Obi can yet Kalkum yet in the Kuku Num Kuku Num so so ni jina huye. So say man who said. We are for Ken, Frank Adane, my vindicative. Me kase, se political party, obabe to o mai. Indi se osha o mai no mana, automatically, u political party no, eni bidi o mai no so forever. Nya no anabo kwa kukwa ati nyakai. It will go by the natural principle. So everything shows that NPP has lost. NPP has lost 2024. And with these four months left, and they cannot do anything. And the only Messiah, Kennedy a complete with Japan. Now he is the only Messiah in Ghana politics. Honorable Ken, Ubuonye. This information is a straight bullet to Dr. Elijah Mahmoud Baumia. So Dr. Elijah Mahmoud Baumia, rest in peace. Na enche yebe di u nao kinse forty days you. Na ya yewe ye na ya kwa kusi you. We di a straight bullet from Mwa Ankasa mucho mucho mucho. Se me kachire mo. Me si we are for Ken TV Frank Adane. Don't dare ask. Se mu challenge ye diye chinye. Nyanko pombe ma mu wankasa. Ogu mu huwe ni mase. And this more is yet to come to December. From now to December. And ye me be PP no. And se de me kaye. Exclusive expose. Nanaro dan kwe kufuado. In 50 billion US dollars. Wait for me. Michi obibi ya. Subscribe to We Are For Ken TV. And share the link.